boogie called Tied Up. When I started playing my music, I was just rocking up everything I get my hands on. So if what I'm doing now is rock and roll, then I was doing it then. So you can call that the root, the trunk, or what of the tree, but it sure ain't no twig or leaf. Hi, I'm Christina. Hey, I'm Curtis. And, and that, that was Miss Cordell, Cordell Jackson. Jackson. Cordell Jackson was born on July 15, 1923 in Pontotoc, Mississippi. She performed with her father's band on a radio station at just 12 years old, and later in life, Cordell Jackson appeared in movies, became known as a rocking granny, and recorded her live in Chicago album. But before she did all of that, in 1956, she created her own music label called Moon Records after Sam Phillips demonstrated his lack of time to help promote her. She used this label to not only promote herself, but other artists as well. Take a look at some interesting facts about Moon Records while you listen to Cordell Jackson talk about the start of it all. So I came home and I told my husband these very words. I said, I'm going to start at the top. He said, well, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to go call RCA Victor. They were the leading label at the time. And I said, I'm going to tell them that I won't end to the recording business. Just let them tell me how or you can't. That was part of my makeup, and I called RCA. Chet Atkins answered the phone, believe it or not. He said, well, Mr. E.J. Hines, our custom record salesman, is the one you need to talk to. So I held on, and he transferred me to E.J. Hines. And he says, well, little lady, we can just help you do anything you want to do said, you and your husband drive up and let's talk, and we'll get you started. The characteristics of rockabilly include mostly acoustic instruments, such as the guitar and upright bass. It also has a strong upbeat, which drew many young Americans into the R&B culture. Take a look at the list below for more details on these characteristics. Here's a sample of her 1956 song, Rock and Roll Christmas, that demonstrates some of the rockabilly characteristics we've mentioned. We ruled out Bias One right away since Cordell Jackson recorded and produced English-speaking songs right here in America. Bias Two is arguable because it's likely that our author is framing the contents of our text with the gender bias. We noticed pretty quickly that there was significantly more meat to the discussion of male rockabilly artists than there were for the female artists. We then counted the number of rockabilly artists mentioned and noticed only one in three of these artists are female. When we looked a little deeper, 
it was clear our author's decision to discuss these artists was based on more than just gender. In fact, all the artists mentioned have had popular songs that made their way up the music charts. This fact brings us to bias three. We all noticed pretty quickly that most of the artists our author mentioned have had songs that made it on the popular music charts. When we looked at songwriters, songwriting teams, producers, and record labels, it was obvious to us that he uses this bias to decide who to include and who to exclude from our text because they share the same characteristic of seeing some of their songs hit the popular music charts. Because the songs Cordell Jackson recorded never hit the popular music charts, we strongly believe her lack of popularity is the reason our author chose to omit her from our text. We believe Cordell Jackson should be included in the Rockabilly Ladies section of our text for several reasons. In an era in which music was dominated by male artists, Cordell Jackson created her own independent record label in which to legitimately record and promote her own music. Also, she is the first female to write, sing, arrange, accompany, record, engineer, produce, and distribute her own music and is credited for paving the way for future female artists and musicians. We also believe that by including Cordell Jackson into our text, future history of rock music students would receive an enhanced understanding of this era of music. Up to this point, we've read about male musicians, male artists and groups, popular female artists and groups, popular songwriters and producing teams, and popular male-owned recording labels. If Cordell Jackson was included in our text, our understanding would also include a non-chart-topping, determined, passionate, and internationally known female artist and musician. We would also have read about Moon Records, which was the oldest continuously operating label in Memphis, Tennessee, which just happened to be owned and run by a female, Miss Cordell Jackson.